Ill-behaved kids, something I and many others have had to deal with a multitude of times. Whether you work in fast food or in childcare, you've probably ran into someone's little crotch goblin that doesn't have an understanding of basic boundaries and the concept of saying no. Some TikTokers, in fact, have accounts dedicated to this ongoing issue in which I agree. Call out bad parenting and kids being little shitters. And let's be for real, some of them deserve it. <laughs> However, there's a TikToker who is taking it a tad too far and a bit too seriously from calling out behavior that is irrelevant to his cause or just hating on parents for being poor. <laughs> Let me introduce you to Neurodivergent Nate, an individual who still shows up on my For You page after I have blocked him over and over again. This person and the way he talks about mothers and people in poverty genuinely just makes me sad. As someone who has grown up extremely low income, it's oftentimes because of just like changes in circumstance that families end up in low income situations, circumstances in which the family oftentimes cannot even help. I have drawn the conclusion that Nate is extremely privileged, privileged enough to not understand that struggle, privileged enough to not understand that situations might just change. In fact, he knows he's privileged and has made a TikTok bragging about it. As if calling me privileged is an insult like you wouldn't want this life. Be so for real. Rather than acknowledging that his privilege may not allow him to understand how people become low income and how hard it is to get out of that type of situation. He's made a TikTok saying that parents who cannot afford school supplies are trashy parents. The fact that some parents can't afford to buy their kids back to school supplies is truly a tragedy. You had children and you can't even afford to give them the bare minimum school supplies of a few pencils, a couple of folders, and a few notebooks. As if they can help it if they're in a, that type of situation. A parent might have been able to afford school supplies for their kid easily pre-pandemic, but after 2020, they may have gotten laid off or even just lost a significant amount of their income. You're acting like we're still not experiencing the aftermath of the pandemic and its effects today. And because of those effects, there are now just families who are struggling to get back on their feet, even four years after the fact. That coupled with the fact that rent and prices for everything have skyrocketed, and that's just out of a parent's control. They might be trying to put food on the table and just can't fit a packet of pencils or crayons into that budget. Then going on to blame teachers as if the children should be punished for what you're calling trashy parenting. And to the teachers spending their own money on this? Like, what the? Stop it! Like, yo, it is such pick me energy. Like, because I care about, tell yourself whatever you need to, like. Why would the teachers punish the kids for being broke? It's almost like they're empathetic to the children and still want them to have a good learning experience regardless of their income. No, Nate, it's not pick me energy to make sure a kid whose parents are just trying to get by doesn't have to suffer at school as a result of that. It's called making sure that every kid has an equal opportunity to learn regardless of their income. Just because I don't spend money on my students for things that their parents can't afford to give them, doesn't mean I don't care about them. No, Nate, it does mean you don't care about them. You're letting circumstances that they can't change affect your view of them and whether or not they're worthy of a good education experience by not lending them a fucking pencil. Poor kids aren't the reason you're struggling as an educator. It's the people who hand their kids iPads. iPads in which most low-income people cannot afford. But I guess it's still their fault for being poor. Why is it that people in poverty have the most kids and are the trashiest parents? Like you see, Nate here asks why people in poverty have the most kids when the answer is readily available, with a single Google search, in fact. People in poverty are less likely to be educated, whether it be educated on things like safe sex or contraceptives, they lack that education. Then, at that, even if they were educated on safe sex and preventative measures, it probably still wouldn't be able to afford it. Contraceptives and even a termination are costly and let's also not ignore the fact when Women in most religions are made to be homemakers, meaning they don't work as their religion says not to work. They're made to bear as many kids as possible to fulfill their wifely duties to their husbands who are made to work and provide for that family. Nowadays, this doesn't work as well with the increase in prices for about everything, so you end up with these hyper-religious families who are just broke as fuck. But rather than blaming the system that set that up, the system that makes sure that poor people are uneducated, the system that makes sure that people 
people cannot afford reproductive care through means of contraceptive and or a termination, you are still going to blame the people who are poor. Let's also not forget the only actual way to get rid of a fetus if those protective measures fail because they can. Abortion isn't legal in most states. It's only gotten harder to get a termination because of the overturn of Roe v. Wade. But I expect a man like yourself to not understand the struggles that women face when it comes to reproductive health care. Let's take a break from talking about his utter hatred for low-income people. I'll never understand parents that want to be their child's friend because this kid literally flips off their parent every day they come to pick him up. And I'm like, one, if I ever did that, my mom would rip me a new one in front of everyone and then tell me to walk home. This girl is very entitled. She has dyed hair. I know the parents are paying for that. It costs money. She has like goth jewelry on her with chains that costs money. She has furry literally apparel like ears and foxtails that cost money so you're telling me the mom and dad are spending money on her when she behaves like this this is why student behaviors are through the roof and the kids literally don't comprehend why it's inappropriate when they talk to teachers the way they talk to them. Here you see our incredible hero is anchored by a teenager flipping off her parent in an obviously joking manner. As someone who has a decent relationship with their parents, I too am guilty of this type of behavior. When my parents ask me to do something and I say no, I won't, and then go on to do it, is that deserving of them getting angry? Is that deserving of some sort of punishment? You insinuate it's out of disrespect when you don't no, you only know it in the context of a few short clips merged together for a TikTok. I'm sure if the parents took issue with this, it wouldn't be happening, but it clearly isn't an issue for the parents, it's only an issue with our hero Nate. <laughs> he also seemingly takes issue with the parents supporting their child's self-expression, getting angry that these parents are paying for her to have the jewelry she likes and a hair color of her choice, because respecting your child's individuality enough to buy them clothes and accessories that they want to be able to express themselves is somehow a bad thing in trashy parenting. Let's remember, this is a grown man blaming a teenager for other children's bad behavior, as if comfort and joking with a parent is indicative of bad behavior. Neurodivergent Nate seems to be a woman hater that just has an extreme disdain for those in poverty, a situation in which, again, most families cannot help. Once you fall in, the climb back out is much harder than one might think. I find it ironic, however, that Nate seemingly only targets women out of the countless of scrolls I've done through his account. I have rarely ever seen videos about fathers, just videos insulting single moms and calling them trashy for putting food on their children's plates and having a roof over their heads. It seems Nate has forgotten the other half of the equation, and that is men. It takes two to tango, especially when you're doing the devil's tango. We're also just not going to blame the irresponsible men who may have left their partners as soon as they figured out she was pregnant and not wanting to take responsibility for that. The fact that securing child support oftentimes takes a long time and is costly, and it kind of just lets these men run away without taking that responsibility. But once more, it's always the woman's fault and a misogynist eyes. So EBT vibes. I also want to yap about the fact that Nate often shames people for getting on EBT or government assistance because even if you as a woman are just trying to get some extra income to give your kid a decent life, that's not enough. He'll sit there and shame women for being on EBT and call it trashy because if you don't have enough income, you're trashy, but if you seek assistance, you're also trashy. He also seems to forget that just the fact that you have a kid means you cannot work as much unless you have the means to pay for childcare, which even middle class parents cannot afford to do nowadays. And now they're even trying to take away free lunches to add insult to injury, putting low income people in a very bad position. Seeking government assistance to help afford a child that, again, the government is restricting women from getting rid of is not trashy. If women are forced to have the kids, the government should be forced to pay for them. But again, rather than blaming the system that put that in place, let's blame the single mothers who are put in a position of having no choice. Anyways, I think that wraps everything up. I'm Ren, I'm tired, 
and thank you for watching. Wait, before I go, I wanted to say thank you to everyone for all the support recently. If you would like to support me more, you can subscribe or follow me on Twitch. I am working on a more silly video for 1k, so keep an eye out for that as well. And I promise I will be having longer videos on the way as well. Uh, I'm just doing these short ones right now as filler because it kind of takes a lot of research to get it done, but I promise I will have a longer video out and it will hopefully be longer than the Aspen video. So anyways, thank you everyone and bye bye for real this time. I'll see you all later.